Hi everybody, my name is Meet Barot and I'm a NYU PhD student at the Center for Data Science and today I'm going to be talking about unsupervised classification of proteins for new function discovery. Uh, this is a method uh, called SeekScan that I'm going to be presenting. Uh, so the first thing I want to get across here is that unsupervised learning is uh, crucial for biological data. And uh, the reason for this is that most data in biology is unlabeled, the experiments are expensive and error prone, and uh, most of our current efforts are in supervised learning algorithms. Uh, for function prediction, uh, we are limited by the annotations that are currently available, and uh, not only that, we're also uh, restricted by the fact that the label sets themselves are incomplete. We don't know all the possible functions that are out there for proteins. And so we need tools to get these uh, functional categories of proteins, uh, whether they have labels or not. And most of the uh, newly sequenced organisms uh, that are out there likely have some new functions. Uh, so we have to have a way of discovering these categories in order to infer new go terms, uh, to correct the old terms, or uh, even create entirely new uh, ontologies and uh, really classify proteins without labels. Uh, so uh, what we're doing in this work is clustering with neural networks. And the reason for this is that we that we ideally want a clustering method to be able to be trained batchwise in order to uh, be able to train on uh, unlimited, uh, essentially unlimited numbers of proteins, uh, so on the order of hundreds of millions, and have constant time inference for a new protein uh, coming in. Uh, we don't want to have to uh, compute pairwise similarities to previous samples like we might in other kinds of clustering methods like spectral clustering. Uh, two other reasons are because we want to use class activation maps in order to highlight specific, specific parts of a protein that correspond to some hypothetical class that we're training uh, to uh, cluster proteins into. And the third reason would be that we want to uh, combine uh, the feature learning aspects uh, with the clustering process. And neural networks allow us to do this uh, pretty, uh, pretty naturally. Uh, so the work that I'm going to present is uh, inspired by this work in image classification called Learning to Classify Images Without Labels, uh, which uh, the method that they propose is called SCAN. Uh, and the first step in this paper uh, was to learn a self-supervised model uh, uh, to, that learns a feature space of images. And uh, this uh, model has a loss function that is, sent, that is uh, of this kind of form uh, where you, you have a neural network phi parameterized by theta uh, that acts on a, an image xi, and uh, its output is an embedding, and you want this embedding to be similar to the embedding of its transformation. Uh, and that transformation could be uh, cropping the image, or uh, reversing it, or some kind of color transformation. Uh, they uh, tried a lot of different kinds of transformations. Uh, but uh, we want to minimize this distance d uh, through this parameter space theta uh, of the neural network. So doing this would allow uh, for learning a good feature representation of images. And so they do show that they learn a pretty good representation in this self-supervised learning process. So the column on the left here is a uh, just all the images that uh, they selected for this example. 
uh, and these uh, images, these four on the right of this turtle here, are uh, this, uh, tur this turtle's nearest neighbors in the future space. So in the future space, uh, the closest images uh, to a turtle are all also turtles. The closest images to this goldfish are all also goldfish. So uh, they show this kind of uh, more quantitatively here where they're taking uh, pairs of uh, neighbors in the feature space and showing that uh, showing the percentage that are in fact the same uh, semantic class in whichever data set uh, that they're looking at. So given that uh, this, these neighbors in the feature space are corresponding to the same class, uh, they can now use this uh, k-nearest neighbors graph as a prior uh, to train uh, a softmax classification layer uh, after uh, on, on top of the uh, previous model. So they have a, this neural network now parameterized by eta, which uh, includes the softmax output uh, layer, uh, and they are, they are minimizing this loss function, which uh, will maximize the dot product between the softmax output of x and its neighbor uh, k in, uh, in this loss function. So uh, when two softmax vectors are maximally, uh, when, when their dot product is maximal, uh, is, is at its maximum, uh, they're basically just one hot vectors in the same place. So uh, they would be agreeing uh, and consistent in their, uh, in their uh, cluster predictions. And uh, so one way to trivially uh, minimize that loss function, though, would be to assign everything to the same cluster. And so in order to avoid that trivial solution, they add an entropy term here, which spreads out the probability mass across all of the clusters. Uh, and so uh, when they take their best models, uh, they see that their uh, performance is uh, getting fairly close to uh, a supervised approach in terms of their accuracy and the normalized mutual information and uh, in several of these data sets. So this intrigued us and we wanted to apply this on, uh, on protein sequences and so what uh, we did was we uh, took uh, a data set of uh, 10 protein families, total about 6,000 proteins, and we wanted to uh, cluster these uh, proteins into these 10 protein families uh, without using any labels. And so what we did was we used a language model that was trained on 10 million protein sequences from PFAM, uh, and we used that as our self-supervised uh, embedding model. Uh, and we uh, were going to evaluate the clusters uh, that we obtain using this whole sc sc the whole scan framework uh, using normalized mutual information with respect to the protein family labels. And so the first uh, thing to check is whether two proteins in the same uh, neighborhood in the feature space that we have from this language model uh, are in fact uh, going to be in the same uh, protein family. Uh, so looking at this uh, T-SNE plot, we can see that most uh, neighbors in this feature space are going to be part of the same protein family, which is exactly what we want. And uh, so we then took these uh, learned features and we trained a softmax uh, classification layer uh, with the scan uh, clustering loss function. Uh, same one as before that I explained. Uh, and we trained that uh, clustering model uh, over and uh, we evaluated using the normalized mutual information uh, over the over uh, the training epochs. 
and we see that we got around uh, 0.78 uh, at the end and uh, we compare this with a baseline clustering method which is uh, just uh, principal component analysis on the sequence features and we take the principal components and we run uh, k-means clustering uh, on that and so uh, we get an NMI of around 0.61 which, uh, so we, we outperform this baseline uh, pretty well. And uh, so now we want to just go through uh, the predictions a little bit more uh, detail, just to visualize these. Uh, so what we have here is a proportion of, the, of each protein family in each of these cluster assignments. This is just a random prediction. Uh, this is r just a randomly uh, assigned uh, clusters to all these proteins in this uh, data set of 6,000 proteins. Uh, but just to show that uh, when you have random predictions, you will get a uniformly distributed, uh, uh, you, you will get a uniform distribution of all of these protein families in each cluster. And so now when we're using our model, uh, SeekScan, uh, we're we see much more clear and defined uh, clusters which uh, pretty much correspond directly uh, in m many cases to uh, these protein families. So for instance, this uh, FAME1 uh, protein family uh, is uh, uh, the zeroth cluster uh, here and uh, we can see that generally, if we wanted to, we could assign the uh, protein families based on uh, this clustering uh, uh, model uh, pretty accurately. So in order to evaluate how accurate it would be if uh, we were just evaluating these predictions as if uh, we were evaluating a supervised model, then uh, we need some way to uh, actually map these cluster assignments to the uh, to the to the actual labels. So in order to do that, we need to do a bipartite matching, which we our goal is to maximize the accuracy of the cluster assignments with respect to the protein families. So this is the only part here now that we're actually using the labels in order to. Uh, actually map from the cluster assignments uh, to the protein families. Uh, so, but this is just to evaluate uh, how good these, this uh, clustering really is. And so when we do this bipartite matching and we see uh, the uh, different categories here that uh, all, all of this was was uh, rearranging this, these um, uh, these bars and labeling them uh, with the bipartite matched labels in order to uh, have the maximal uh, uh, correspondence between the um, between the cluster assignment and the actual protein family. And so we do pretty well when evaluating this unsupervised model as a supervised uh, protein family uh, predictor. Uh, and we get it around 85% accuracy. Uh, so this was encouraging, and we wanted to scale up to many millions of proteins, so we trained a clustering model on 16 million proteins uh, containing 15,000 protein families, and we tested on 1.8 million proteins with uh, 13,000 families. So this means we just trained the clustering model on this big training set and we did not train at all on these 1.8 million proteins, um, uh, but our model uh, was going to produce uh, clusters for them. And so we're using NMI again, so just measuring the redundancy of our labels with uh, the actual protein family labels. And we see that we outperform them pretty well, uh, the uh, baseline uh, method. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'd like to thank my uh, co-authors, uh, Vladimir Glagorovich, 
Uh, my advisors, Rich Bono and Kyung Yoon Cho from NYU, uh, the Bono Lab in general. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. And if you want to uh, see updates on this work, go to meetborrow.com. And uh, or you want to email me, you can email me at uh, meetborrowed at nyu.edu. Uh, thanks, and uh, see you all at the conference.